you may just think as an F1 driver, we're sitting on our backside, pushing pedals and turning a steering wheel, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So we're gonna talk about the Formula One steering wheel. A lot of buttons and switches, I don't know exactly how many, and a lot of them are, are multifunctional. On top of that, the display, which is giving us a lot of information, and we can also scroll through different pages. Uh, information like uh, lap delta tells us if we're going faster or slower than our best lap. Um, tire temperatures, uh, both surface and carcass, which is extremely important in Formula One, especially in qualifying, getting the, the perfect temperature before we start the lap. Brake temperatures, uh, there could be alarms, revs, obviously, which mainly we look at the, the lights. So these, these are the shift lights. Also, the lights can be used for multiple reasons. Uh, both shifting, uh, when the DRS can be activated, when the DRS is activated. Uh, also warning lights to, to attract our attention when something, uh, something's not going to plan. Using the steering wheel can be quite complicated. There's a 35 page manual, so I'm not going to have time to go through the whole thing. Uh, but if I go through some of the features we use very often. Uh, DRS, which is activated by a button for us. It'll be different all the way down the pit lane. There'll also be a light to tell us when we can use it or not. Um, gear changes on the back, so up and down. Uh, we have a clutch, which is also pulled from, from the back of the steering wheel, so it's uh, finger operated. Some of the other buttons are interesting. Overtake, so this is uh, something for engine where we can deploy a little bit more. Obviously, there's always a penalty later uh, in the lap or, or, or the following laps, but this can be useful for overtaking. Something that, that's adjusted very often is the entry diff, how locked the diff is on, on corner entry. When the tire is getting old and we have less and less stability from the rear, we go up and up on diff entry, as, as an example. Pit limiter, very important, we activate this at the right time. Uh, it can result in a penalty, but can also win us a lot of time in the pit stop. Uh, so once this is activated, we have a constant speed of 80 kilometers per hour. This is the engine mode, um, so there'll be different modes for qualifying, uh, different scenarios in the race to, to, to raise or lower the state of charge of the battery. Then we have two multifunctions. So from these two multifunctions, we can change thousands of things on the car. As an example, I have a uh, GB. So the, the team would ask me uh, multi gearbox, which would be this one. And then I have uh, plus and minus of uh, 10, they could ask me for 35, so I'd have to click the 10 three times, the one five times, and there'll be a fail. I mean, this could be a, a very wide range of, uh, of changes to the car. It could be failing a sensor, um, a lot of background things that we won't even know we're changing. In Formula One, a lot of information is being sent from the car to the pit wall, to the hundreds of engineers that are monitoring, but nothing's allowed to be sent from the pit wall to the car. So anything they see in the data that needs to be changed, or uh, it could be failing a sensor, it could be something to do with temperatures, engine control, they have to give us the instruction to make the change. Uh, this can be tricky at 300 kilometers per hour, scrolling through and finding the right, the right change to make, um, but it's part of the job and it, it, becomes, uh, it becomes quite natural after a while. In terms of weight, it's probably about one kilo. Uh, obviously there's a lot of electronics inside. The shell is carbon fiber and, and uh, weight is always a big, big topic in Formula One, so anywhere they can save weight, they will.